Uh, where the topic for this afternoon is uh, down memory lane. Uh, we are very glad to have three um, distinguished former uh, teachers, uh, principals with us who will share the experience. But uh, before I put them on, right, I, I like to uh, share some um, house rules. First of all, um, we need to uh, we need to mute our mics if we are not uh, speaking, right? And also to turn off the video so that uh, we will be able to see the speakers uh, who will be presenting as well as uh, you'll be able to hear clearly just in case there's some buffering in the, in the connection. Now, um, what I'm going to show you now is the uh, QR code here for the evaluation form. I would appreciate if we can uh, do your evaluation uh, by scanning this QR code and send your feedback to us so that we can improve ourselves as we go forward. Now, at the end of the day, we will be having um, the we'll be having three or four different type of chat rooms uh, whereby we we'll have our counselors in those rooms. Should you uh, want to join us to ask questions or to know more about our programs, you can visit those chat rooms and speak to our counselors. So without much ado, I'm going to hand over this session to our our moderator for this afternoon, uh, Mr. Uh, Low. So over to you, Mr. Low. Thank you very much, Gregory. Welcome to the forum, A Walk Down Memory Lane, Learning from Experience. On behalf of Help University and Help Academy, the organizers would like to wish our esteemed panel of speakers, participants, and all the teachers out there, happy Teachers' Day. For this year's theme for our celebration at the university level, it is celebrating our teachers as guide and mentors to the new generation. Here I would like to thank everyone who has the, taken time to attend this session, and we shall listen to the lessons from the past from our panel of speakers who have a vast store of experiences from their years of involvement in education. I would like to take this opportunity now to introduce our speakers. The first speaker is Madam Penny Lim. She is a retired educator a former director of a teacher education institute in Keningau, Sabah. Our second speaker is Madam Marie Yong, a retired pengetua cemerlang from St. Michael, Penampang, and she is now currently the principal of a private school in Kota Kinabalu. And our third speaker, Madam Debbie Yong, also, a uh, former name is uh, Madam Tan, is a retired Pangatua Chemerlang and formerly the principal of SM Convent Sentul. So we have here three fantastic and amazing individuals who are educationists at heart. So let's start off the session today by asking them the first question that will they will share with us their experiences and also their uh, ideas and opinions about teaching. So, uh, Madam Penny, Madam Marie, and Madam uh, Debbie. So let's start. My first question is: You all have been involved with education for almost. 40 years, four decades. How do you remain committed to the cause of education? That's my first question. And the second part of it is, did you have an occasion in the past where someone or somebody has impacted on you as a teacher? So let's start off with Penny. Let's hear your experience from your line of uh, of uh, career. Over to you, Penny. All right, thank you, Mr. Lo. 
Um, yeah, it's been an incredible 35 years of journey in education. And uh, of course, we have our ups and downs. Okay, there have been happy moments, exciting moments, exuberant moments, uh, jubilant moments. But we also have our frustrating moments, our disappointment. We were upset at times, we were sad when things don't go our way. But I can tell you in the 35 years of uh, my journey in education, there's never been a dull moment. Okay? I think my friends uh, will attest to it, is it? They are smiling. Never a dull moment, you see. Because um, can you imagine uh, you know, the excitement when, you're, when a student won a team during the sports day? Everybody was jubilant. You know? And uh, when you come to a contest, you know, everybody was there supporting our team, teachers, the students, you know, and we we won, we are so excited, we, we lost, of course, we were disappointed and we console one another. And um, what about all the events? I'm sure the listeners, uh, they also remember their school days, the pasaria you have, the sports day, the gotong royong, all the camp, study camp, co-curriculum camp. I tell you, teaching is always very exciting. Even my daughter said, you have an exciting life, you know. And um, and I think you all agree with me. And uh, I think what kept me going was that, you know, you see a student come in, 13 years old, standard one, feeling scared, not sure of himself, you know, standing there and... Uh, uh, waiting for the teacher to give instruction because they came from the primary school. Okay? And you see them progress from Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, Form 5, even Form 6. And, and they, they come out very confident. Huh? Sometimes a bit cheeky, but very confident. They, they, you, they become leaders in their own way with their school. So we know we have a part to play with our teachers. We can't do without our teachers where we nurture these students from a very innocent, scared, you know, not sure of themselves, to someone who really can stand up and speak, can do debate, can um, uh, strong physically, you know. And it's a trust given to us by our par the, from the parents, isn't it? And, uh, you know, to know that what we do makes a difference in the lives of uh, these children, isn't it? Whether we do it well, whether we don't do it well, whether our teachers perform or don't perform, it all reflected on our students, isn't it? So I think that is the one that uh, kept me going, knowing that uh, what we do matters. That we train our children when they come up, finishing uh, five years with us, they learn to make good choices, you know, learn to value hard work, discipline, integrity. We hope these values will carry with them throughout their whole life. You know? And what, uh, and these are the things that kept me going, you know. You know when I go to the, to the, to the bank, suddenly a, a student will, a, a lady will pop out and say, hello teacher, you know. I, I go uh, to the immigration and then, Chegu, and then, I go to a petrol farm and they say, Chegu. <laughs> so we meet all kinds of uh, students and they, they make our day, isn't it? Right. Uh, regarding your second question, uh, what's the incident that impacted uh, me uh, as a Trinity? I, I had um, two incidents. One was, I was just a trainee teacher in a school in Kampong Kerinci, I remember. Standing here, uh, there for a two year, a uh, two month uh, teaching practice, and uh, that school, you know, Kampong Kurinchi in the eighties. Uh, I tell you, the school was um, there's no window. The glasses are open. The school, the student can hop in out of the class, hop out of the class, you know, because the, the windows are all, the glass are all uh, broken, graffiti everywhere, and then there is a. Um, the, uh, the new principal came in. I think when I went there, he was about about a month in the teaching, and he was very strict. And uh, and one day, 
he, he had to go for a meeting. And then during the time, the senior assistant said, teacher, go to your class. And then the teachers were all laughing. And, uh, and they said, ah, when the cat is away, the mouse will play. And I was there looking at them, you know, looking at them. And then there's one teacher. She stood up and said, no, not for me. Whether the cat is in or whether the cat is out, I will still go to my class. It is my job. It is my responsibility. I tell you, that touched me, you know. I just look at her, you know. And what she did impacted me, you know, to one part. Every time when I, when, you know, in the course of my teaching, I feel discouraged. Uh, sometimes you just feel, uh, you don't want to face the student. There are times, and, 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 and they, they say, uh, I remember this teacher, and I was in in uh, uh, my first year of teaching. Uh, also, the same thing happened, you know. The the, the sent to a rural school, and 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 uh, the discipline was not very good. But there's one teacher, I remember, Indian teacher. She stood up and said, "I will go to class. I will go to class," and that has kept me, you know, and. They were my mentor in that sense, you know. I always remember, remember these two teachers. They kept me going. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Penny. Very excellent stories that you shared there. So, what about you, Marie? Marie, can you unmute your mic? Uh, thank you, Mr. Lo, and good uh, afternoon uh, to all the participants. All right, I do agree with what uh, uh, Madam Penny said about her experience as well as what she stayed on. But then to me, uh, there are other parts of the story. Well, for me to stay on as a uh, committed to the cause of education is how to sustain your patient in the job. I think this is a very challenging thing because around us, uh, yeah, to stay patient is not an easy job as there are many naysayers and indifferent people around you. Uh, I remember in the, 90s, in the 90s when I was transferred to a fairy school and met the form teacher of the most indisciplined class to teach for five mathematics. Most people were telling me that you are wasting your time and talent for this class so even in this school. But I was very demoralized and surely appealed to the department to transfer me to another school. However, I was fortunate that I became my mind and I was and I was ever very mindful to continue igniting my fire in the Hello? Yeah, so what I did is yeah, to stay patient in my, uh, to stay patient and committed to the course application, I stay connected with some positive educators. Hello? Where they work, yeah? And one thing I do is to cooperate yeah, with positive teachers to form a small team to face the challenges. I was fortunate at that time, there are some positive teachers in the school and we, yeah, form a team. Uh, I think we lose Marie there. Marie, your connection is down. to tell you that just after three months after this incident, I was able to turn the class into a model class. All the students, yeah, not only become able to, not only able to pass their examination, but became a very disciplined students. Huh? I learned that if you are passionate, love your students, listen to them, you can make a difference to the students. So yeah, so to stay passionate, I still think that yeah, 
we need yeah we need to get yeah positive educators and inspire all of us and then we funding work so that we can stay committed to the cost of education thank you hello mr lo Okay, thank you very much, Marie. We lost you Hello, for Mr. a while Lo. there. Yes, hi, Marie. Uh, the connection was a bit poor, but we managed to get most of your ideas from there. So uh, we shall now pose the same question to Debbie. Uh, Debbie, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Am I unmuted? Yeah. Yes, okay, you're good to go. Yeah. Right. So. Oh. Uh, Please carry on. Okay, education open up many opportunities for friendship for me. I have many students who have stayed friends, uh, even though they are 50 something years old now. Um, and I think it's wonderful to, to have such long term relationship with uh, the student and education opens that. And um, it's not just celebrating the exam success with the students uh, or the there are moments when um, when you see a child has matured to think beyond themselves or that they have the resilience to spring back. Those are very meaningful moments and you realise that the only thing you need to do is to teach well and you have gained their trust and the family trust and it opens the avenue for friendship. Okay, a memorable student uh, occasion is a girl called Alicia. She was 17 years old. I had taught her the year before and I went to another school as principal. And Alicia was fairly affluent. She came to me uh, in my new school and she gave me her Chinese New Year Ang Pao of uh, 600 uh, ringgit. And she told me, because she had a cousin in the school and she knew the school had poor students. So she took that, uh, she mm. gave that money and she asked, teacher, can you give the money? Mm -hmm any student who needs it. And what I did was I took her $600. I gave $60 to a student for 10 months. But I told her, her story because she was only 17 years old. And you know, a 17 year old can have plenty of use for $600. But she thought about the needs of other people and she decided to give it for to other people. And what happened was after I told her story, uh, people began to want to be like Alicia and give. And what started was uh, there was a program uh, where from one giver, it became, uh, okay, that's Alicia you, that you can see. Um, and from her 600, the next year it shot up to 30,000. Okay. And then by the time I went through in uh, 2017, she, we started in 2011 with Alicia's money. By the time I went through in 2017, the yearly giving was 90,000. And from one donor, one little girl donor, I had seven, 15 men giving and organization giving uh, 90,000 a year. And when I accumulate that whole sum, it is 370,000 for, for those years. And you know, the inspiration is one girl who thought beyond herself. And, um, what gave me that passion to teach? How has it impacted my teaching? That we must really teach from our heart. And uh, Alicia wasn't that kind of you know, good, good girl. She was playful, but she had kindness and she had leadership in her. And I think uh, that inspired other people. And I want to encourage all teachers, teach your student well. That uh, once you teach them well, they will inspire people, not necessarily always through money, sometimes through different ways of giving, whether they give of the time, of the energy and different things. Okay, and uh, there's a blog link there in case you think uh, the story you can read the details about Alicia. So for me, the lesson learned is really teach every child well with all that you've got. Okay, and it will impact many uh, other people down the line in a way that you never think possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
uh, Debbie, such a wonderful story coming from your side, as well as from Marie and also Penny. The next question, uh, we have a lot of teachers and aspiring teachers out there among the audience. So what would you say to them? What are the qualities that uh, a teacher need to acquire in order to become effective or successful in their career? What do you say to that, Marie? Marie, would you like to start uh, off the discussion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, Mr. Lo, there are many articles that have written to give account of qualities. Uh, what are the qualities to be a good teacher? However, I would like to share my experience as well as survey and observation which I have done in some schools. But I personally do not want to rent these qualities as I feel that there are all important qualities which the teachers should have. Right? Among them, first, I would say that you must have the patience in the teaching and have a desire to become a good teacher. Teachers could possess the quality, the patience and desire will definitely uh, be more committed and responsible towards his or her professional responsibilities. He will regard teaching as a vocation. He or she will, be res will respond to the strong feeling of calling for service with almost dedication. He is dedicated not just to work, but to serve the student, school, community, and counting, and mankind on the whole. So this is, I think, one of the very important characters uh, to uh, qualities that the teachers should have. Secondly, I also think that another quality that the teachers must have, you must love the subjects that you teach. You also must love the children. It's not enough just to love the subject that you teach. You've got to love the student and show a high degrees of empathy and humility. I always believe that teacher will become the role model to the students. Students will be touched by your deeds and action, motivated and makes a difference in them. The best teacher will equip their students with skills not only to pass their exams, but to inculcate values and morals in the students. Another one which I think this quality should be possessed by the teacher is willingness to do self-reflection on your teaching and practices. We must be able to cast a critical eyes on our, our practices, our pedagogy, and ourselves, be it good or bad. I know it's very difficult yeah, to do that, but we had to try. When I think it went wrong, do not just point a finger to your students, but you might need to admit that it was because of what you did, not what the students did. But sometimes also the things are, are very good. Yeah, I think we should not take credit to ourselves also. Maybe this that the good thing comes because the student did something. So if you can ever to reflect each day, you will become a better teacher each day as times go by. Now, another uh, quality that you should possess by the teachers, is you should always have the quality to cooperate with other teachers and the community. Remember that nobody is perfect. We will be, yeah, we should learn, we should help others. And in turn, you also take, you know, the whatever good things for other teachers to improvise and to innovate so that you can be a better teacher each day. And of course, one very important other quality thing is you must be willing to change and to always improve. Uh, practice lifelong learning. No less is never, it will never end. Every day there are new things coming in. So as we are teachers, we must try to re-practice lifelong learning. Yeah, we also, also have to look 
yeah, to the student. Properly, sometimes we need to change. We look at the student. We also need to change ourselves because now the students are so different from our times. So we also have to adapt to them. So I think there are some, these are the few five, but of course, good communication and listening skills are very important. Be a teacher, you must be a good communicator because then we can change, we can motivate the student. And you have to be a good listener. Sometimes we don't listen to the student. We got to listen so that then we can guide them, then we can understand them. I think these are the few qualities I would like to share with the teachers, how to be a great teacher. Thank you very much, Mr. Lo. Very good, Marie. I think you have uh, encapsulated everything into one mm -hmm. short lesson for our teachers out there. So uh, what about you, Debbie? Uh, I'm sure you have your ideas to add to Marie's idea earlier on. Hey, hi. Uh, two qualities. One quality, I think, is uh, what we call a people-orientated person. I call it POP, not a task-orientated person alone. You, you must like people because you are going to be around students. Uh, so, and only when you, you are a people-orientated person, you, you have the EQ to connect and you pick up the learning style of the child and then uh, you are willing to adjust to them. Okay, another thing uh, that uh, is really change, a teacher really need to change, okay? Because you, you want to reach your students your students is going to be very different from you. I'm going to tell a story about a boy. Uh, Ama, I teach physics. Uh, even to the last day I retired as HM, I still teach physics. Ama was a typical teenage boy who uh, loved uh, to, he's what we call visual kinesthetic. He need to move. And he's not going to sit down to listen to any lady teacher droning on about physics. So uh, initially he actually played truant and pointing my classes. Okay, but when I caught up with him, I asked him, I understood he, was, he wasn't able to sit still. So what we did was we launched water rockets to understand Newton's laws of uh, motion. And Amma was so happy. His rocket became the first, the, 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 no, the, the highest rocket, you know, the, the winning competition, you know. But the point was uh, not only Amma excelled in physics, his history teacher came one morning to me and ran to me and said, you know, Pantan, what happened? Ama sejarah marks melambung sama tinggi as his rocket. He got 81 for sejarah. That's when I realized I am not teaching a subject, physics. I am teaching a person. You know, when he changed in physics, he got confidence in physics. He changed him as a whole person and he can excel in a boring subject, um, not a, a subject that he didn't like, you know. So these two qualities, a people-oriented person, okay, and a teacher who's willing to change so that they can reach out. That's all. So wonderful to hear that story, Debbie. Well done. You have really impacted on your student. And uh, from you, Penny, what is your take on this question? Penny? Yeah, okay. Can you unmute your mic? Right, right. Both well, Marie and, and uh, Debbie had really uh, bring out the excitement of a teacher, you know. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh? Even now we are retired when you're here, we get Happy so teacher. warm and Thanks. very excited. And, um, and making us what we are today. Keep on doing what you background noise. Uh. So Happy. what Debbie has said and what uh, uh, Marie has said, that every child no matter what color and creed, yeah, uh, want to succeed in to do something. You know? yeah. They want to show their work. And if they cannot do it positively, they will do it negatively. So our role as teacher is to give them the avenue and the support for them to succeed. You know, as you say, listen to their feeling, uh, not just the word. Okay. So to me, an uh, effective teacher is uh, has a positive uh, expectation of the student's success. You have to tell them that they can succeed in something. You know, you give them this positive feeling. And um, but personally, the teacher himself or herself must be a good classroom manager. You can't be an effective teacher if 
you see your class a student running here and there you get cannot get them to sit down you must be able to manage you have to learn the management skills uh, to create the atmosphere for learning remember we have to create the atmosphere for learning then you've got to design your class sometimes teachers don't want to prepare they just take uh, from the textbook they forgot that they need to design the class the, the lesson to fit the class you know I, I i for this i remember my first year as a teacher when i was sent to a, a village school a, a fishing village and was given to uh 1d i remember class 1d the worst class you <laughs> there are all kinds of character inside you know but i thought i really thought with all my heart you know teach and give them a lot you know i know how to teach but i didn't know how to create learning and when the S srp result came in everybody failed except one you know and i cried i really cried huh? that night i really cried because i felt a failure as a, a teacher because I, uh, I i didn't know how to uh, teach learning you know or just giving so you got to design it to 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 fit the class you are teaching it you know so you must be a, 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 a be able to plan your lesson in, with the your students in mind, you know. And of course, as uh, Maria said, professional development. You know, you yourself have to say, you have to change to improve, you know. And uh, uh, doing, uh, for me in my school, when I introduced action research for the students, you know, we have these uh, uh, students, you know, if they fail, ah, dia tak pandai lah, dia tak minat lah. You know, you get all kinds of excuse. And then, uh, we introduced action learning research and the teachers were all asked to pick up a student and do action learning. And then there was one particular student that um, uh, was really incorrigible, you know, he just refused to sit down and all this. So we were so going to write him off. But when the teacher did action research on the student and then went back to the primary school and talk to the teachers, you know, because we take them at form one, form two level and that's it, you know. But we went back, the action research, the, the teacher went back, you know, and talked. And then we found out that the teacher said, this boy was okay, a normal boy until standard three. And then his mother passed away. And then um, he was not able to, to, to deal with the grief and the father remarried. And he could not get along with the, the the stepmother and was fighting all the time with the stepmother. And then he started to withdraw. And then from then on, he refused to talk. He couldn't talk properly. He refused to talk. So when they came to us, he really couldn't talk properly. And because the teacher did action research, huh, you know, her heart was touched. She realized that, you know, it's more than meets the eye. I mean, she cried, you know. And then we, we sort of uh, did more remedial on the student. You know, and um, well, he didn't pass his form five, you know, but he became more positive. So we are able to to push him to do things that he liked to do. He liked to do sports, you know, and instead of being disruptive, he became one of the organizers to help to run the sports on a sports day. You see, something positive for him because the teacher did action research, research. So we have to go beyond what is in the classroom, you know, school situation. And um, so this professional development for the teacher is very important. That's what I feel. Uh, okay. Because what we do affects life, isn't it? Uh, it really affects life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fanny and uh, Debbie, as well as Marie. You know, the three of you have so many wonderful stories to share. I think you all should compile all into a book like chicken soup for the teacher's soul, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure there will be a lot of people out there, our teachers as well as the public, who likes to know more about what makes an ordinary teacher extraordinary. And I'm sure you all have that spark in your, your own personal excellence as well as your career excellence. Well done, our educationists today. So uh, let's move on to the uh, we, we were talking about the past, so now let's look into what is happening today and into the future. Um, 
Teachers are now competing with technology in the classroom, and uh, sometimes technology is there as a tool, but there are occasions when technology may overwhelm the teacher, especially when students are now playing computer games and uh, they expect teachers to be equally entertaining as well. So, and uh, coming up in the near future is uh, artificial intelligence. So what do you think? Are teachers going to become irrelevant? What is your take on this, uh, Debbie? Okay, artificial intelligence will get better and better. But I think as teachers, we have one factor, EQ, that uh, no computer, no robot right. can compete with. Once you engage with them at the heart level, uh, you will touch the students and you will not be irrelevant. Simple things, not just uh, like teaching. I think visitation was one of the things that uh, touched my school. We used to have problem students, you know, and we didn't know what to do with them in class. So what we did was we, I remember the first time there were 17 students, we wrote down the addresses of the 17 students and I just asked the PIBG and teachers, okay, can you help me uh, visit them and just go to their house and see what's wrong with them, you know. So like every one of them were adopted, you know, and, and you, when I think the going to the house, you actually learn the problems that they face at home. But somehow during that course of that first visitation, the students felt that love. And for the first time in that school, they got a 100% SPM pass. And I know it's not the AI, you know, it's not the, the internet, it's the love that they saw that the teachers care. And uh, in Convent Center, we also had many teachers going down, you know, to, to visit problem student houses. And sometimes they would come back, you know, you know this house, there isn't a single bit of furniture, in, you know. They are that poor. We, we don't realize the level of poverty, especially in urban poor. And then when they come back and somebody will donate the whole set of furniture. I think these are the things no computer, no AI can compete it, uh, with. Okay, and for me, this word, uh, this phrase, the heart of education is the education of the heart. That is the most important. That you are not teaching just the brain. You are teaching the heart. And the heart has those values that once they recognize you know, this is the right thing, they will go on for it. Uh, so remember, don't just engage the brain, engage the whole person. And don't just engage in your subject, like AMA, not just in one subject. But because no one is fragmented, we are whole being. So you, you engage the whole person. Okay, over to you. I like that quotation very much. The heart of education is the education of the heart. I think it resonates so well with all of us who are in the teaching line. Thank you, Debbie. So now we go to Penny. Penny, you were involved in teachers training before. So could you maybe uh, give your response from the angle of teachers uh, preparation or teachers uh, student education? Okay. Uh, yeah, Penny, you need to unmute. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Law, you know, in teacher education, you know, the, the lecturer will try to introduce as uh, much um, different ways and approaches for the trainee teachers to experiment with, you know. Of course, one of them was the use of uh, multimedia. Of course, in those days when I was uh, running the, the college, it was not as sophisticated as, as now, you know. It is sort of, uh, you do PowerPoint, you just, uh, you know, do some video clip for the students. But now, we see the challenges now of using all the different uh, kind of webinar uh, uh, to, to engage uh, students, even they are far away. So, I feel that teachers, uh, as you say, they are multitasker. Uh, they need to to be open, to, to be able to, to source information uh, from, the, um, uh, from all kinds of sources. And to remember that they are not the, the only people with information. Nowadays, any student, they just go to Google, 
they go to uh, Wikipedia, they can find the information themselves, isn't it? So it is just. It's not that you are the only one with the information. The students, especially the smart one, will have the information more than you. Okay, so it's a matter of how you're going to train the students to use the information, and teaching them the 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 skill of analyzing the data that they have, the skill of asking relevant questions. Uh, that will these are skills that will carry them on. You see. So as you say, it's not just teaching the content, which is very important, just it, but uh, to to excite the curiosity in the student so that they are able to want to find uh, information for themselves. They want to uh, find uh, answers for themselves. Okay, because until today, I think our education system is still very much a spoon fed one. <laughs> Although now we try to so introduce 21st century learning, but still he has not really really caught on yet. Still, their students are still passive and waiting for teacher initiative. So now the the trainee teachers are, are given skills to help them to motivate them to to push the students that they are not the source of information. The students can source information and how they use information and how they present the information uh, uh, on this. For, for me, at this MCO uh, season, uh, we, we, uh, myself, you know, we go into the website to learn things. Lots of things we can learn uh, from there, you see. And from there, we can see uh, what are the tools, uh, the good ones, and what are the tools that are not so good, you see. And I have been in contact with my lecturers in Kuningau and they, and they were telling me, and some of my teachers in school as well, because we have a little chat group here and there, and they were showing me that what they are doing online. And I'm amazed at their creativity and their determination to, to, to make sure learning uh, goes on despite of this uh, MCO, you know. So, uh, this um, thumbs up to all our teachers. Thank you so much, Patty. Thumbs up, definitely. Our teachers are amazing. And uh, we'd like to hear from you too, Marie, because uh, you're still very active in education, still a principal of a private school in KK. So what is the current situation now? Over to you, Marie. Uh, okay, Mr. Lo. For us to understand whether teachers are in future is going to be relevant or not, we have to understand what everyone, yeah, the artificial intelligence can do. Why? Right? You see that you can imagine in future possible that we have in every classroom, we have, have, have a robot placing in the classroom, and then there will be, you know, programmed yeah, to the needs of individual students. So in other words, can we can learn yeah, according to their, uh, their needs, uh, which is quite difficult for every teacher to do now because in the classroom, we have multi, uh, multi the different levels of uh, competencies among the students. One power system, if they really program properly, the position we work at their own pace, and progress with time. And we get smarter in their learning through artificial intelligence. But I'm sorry, we lost uh, Marie there. Maybe her connection is not very good. Uh, okay, while waiting for Marie to come back online, uh, actually, we are so fortunate now to have the opportunity to learn using 
online applications as well as online learning. And um, during this unprecedented time, our teachers are going all out to continue to ensure that their students are receiving an education. So it, um, I always believe that teachers are the cornerstone of a child development apart from the parents. And um, as teachers, we are what we call local parentis in the place of the parents. And I always feel that teachers are wonderful role models as well as uh, people who can make a difference in a child's life. As like what uh, Annie as well as uh, Debbie has said, you know, you don't educate a child just because it is the subject you are teaching, but you are educating the whole child. So wonderful words and gems of wisdom. And uh, let's see if Marie is back online now. Yeah, I, is Marie, are you still there, Marie? Yeah, yeah. The problem is, I think my internet line is not very stable. I think now maybe connecting back. Okay, uh, okay. can, I, we can, can I still hear continue? you loud and clear now? Oh, uh, okay. I think the line today unified is really not stable. I don't know what happened. Yeah, all right. Okay. Uh, I was uh, talking about this A1, uh, whether it's uh, whether it's relevant or not, the teacher. But we got to understand how this A1. You know, system going to work in the classroom. You see, I will imagine in future there will be a robot, yeah, as what some school, some uh, school are having. In China, they are doing that. Why well, it will be programmed to teach certain information and then according to the pace of the student. Now, this is something good because in our classroom, it's not possible for us, you know, really to look into individual needs. But this A1 will be able to. But at the same time, I will agree with David. There is something left in A1. There is emotional intelligence. Yeah. All right. Now, remember I told you the story that how my class, the worst class in the school, suddenly the student changed. It's not because we don't have teachers to give the information, but they are just not motivated to learn. But to make them motivated to learn, I don't think the A1, uh, the A1 in, uh, artificial intelligence will be able uh, to help in this way. We need some love. We need to show them the love, the caring, yeah, empathy, and so on. So the student will come back to you and start learning. I think that's not also shared by Penny. I think this is a very important factor where yeah, artificial intelligence are lacking. Right? So that's one aspect that, you know, I don't think, yeah, I don't think yeah, teachers will be irrelevant. You should be... The teachers should still be there and help out, complement by the artificial intelligence. Remember that our human brain, uh, yeah, artificial intelligence are created by the humans. Our brain definitely is more creative than the yeah, artificial intelligence. So I think in future, we still need the teachers. Still teachers need them. Remember that in education, it's not about, yeah, uh, and uh, empty them or view them with all the knowledge, but we have to develop other side of the humans' intrinsic characters. Uh, this is where teachers have to be a model and guide them uh, to, yeah, so that they can really build up the character buildings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marie. We are glad you are able to join us. And uh, we may have time for one final question. And uh, this one is um, about what advice would each one of you give to all our teachers and aspiring teachers on the value you inculcate among the students today. So uh, it's open to anyone who would like to voice their ideas first. Uh, okay, maybe Debbie, would you like to, to answer that question first? I think uh, simple values of honesty, diligence, 
respect for the marginalized people who are different from them. Um, people are different, but they feel the same pain. Uh, I, I shared one of my photos earlier. I wore a sari. I am a pure Chinese, but I often wear a sari near Taipusam or Tipa Valley because I want to encourage the Indian community uh, and also teach the students that teamwork is more important than solo work. The old days, solo work was important, but now with Google collaboration, learning to work with one another is a very important thing. So actually all these are not uh, exam skills, but these are necessary for life skills to succeed that we need to teach our students. So I think we, 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 we really need to bring it down to that kind of a basic value that will, it's universal value that will help us succeed in any environment. Honesty, diligence, respect for the marginalized and working with uh, different people, teamwork, collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, and Penny, how about your views about values? You know, when you talk about value, they're so, it, it's so wide. But uh, here you just remember, you want to inculcate the value in your student. You are the role model yourself, isn't it? You are the inspiration to your students. So you live, your your lifestyle really, uh, really uh, encapsulate your, your value system that you pass on. Rather than you talk, tell you, you have to be honest, you have to work hard and... You know, all this, you, you can talk and talk, but when you exhibit this value in yourself, then the students uh, will catch it and they will, they will, they will learn from you and uh, they will want to emulate you, isn't it? All right. And, and uh, when, when you talk about teachers, uh, what I notice uh, with all the teachers that I have uh, I've been dealing with all the years, whether they are uh, teachers or lecturers, in general, they are very loving, they are very caring people, and they, they are also very warm people. You know, something in them uh, as a teacher that spark of the caring for the student. Even then, they are angry with the student, they discipline the student, they, they still, there is a love there, don't you think so? All right, so these are the values we want to continue to develop uh, in your students by by uh, by your lifestyle, is it? So you must remember what you do matters. It really matters. What you do matters. It matters that you prepare your lessons well when you go to class. It matters that you 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 mark your students, students uh, work well. Isn't it? To give an extra effort to put command in the students. It matters that uh, you. You call the students up and talk to them rather than talk down to them. Okay, it matters to society. It matters to the country. Yeah? The the work you do, you might think it matters. It matters to the family who entrusted the children to you, and it matters to the life of the students, their future. It matters. Whatever you do, it matters. That's how I feel, and. Uh, the value that you are going to pass down to your student is the value you live by, isn't it? Your integrity, your hard work, your kindness, isn't it? All right. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Penny. I think that's... And um, what you say is really touching as well as uh, so relevant to our children and teachers. And uh, finally, Maru, would you like to add to what has been shared by Debbie and Penny just now? All right, uh, thanks again, Mr. Lo. Well, I think uh, Gandhi, yeah? Gandhi once said that education mean, means not drawing up the best of a child. The body, the mind, and the spirit are equally important. So if for us to see the education is not, yeah, please 
don't think that education is not just a merely acquisition of knowledge, but we should think of transformation of information into knowledge and knowledge into wisdom. Character buildings and holistic development of personality are inherent in education. So for me is if we want, if we want to educate a child, it's just not that knowledge is equally important, but the values are very important. I think just now, yeah, Madam Penny and as well as Madam Debbie have outlined a few, but I would just like to add in a few more. I think one is the empathy and the compassion. You yeah, this children now this might have this, yeah, because a lot of them, you see, they are pampered. Many of the children are pampered by the parents. Everything they ask, they will get it. But they never think of how others, other children who are in the difficult condition, they don't experience as what we do before, right? Another thing also, the love for the environment. Yeah, this is something we must inculcate in our students. Yeah, the world now is very polluted. Yeah, if we don't inculcate the children to love the environment, I do not know what happened in future. Yeah, there will be no place for us human beings to do in this earth. Right? And one more thing I think is equally important is hygiene, the value of hygiene. Now, especially now in the COVID-19 now, we can see that uh, many of us or many of uh, people around us still do not practice hygiene. This is the value we must inculcate. Yeah, we must do our part to keep everybody safe. Yeah. So something that we should try now to inculcate in our our uh, our children. And one more thing is I should think that we should be appreciative yeah, for God. And we should be God feeling this type of uh, value should be in it. Now you see the war is so in disorder, war here and there, fighting here and there. Why? I think if people are God feeling, uh, if the students, if the children, or the every individual, yeah, is God feeling, I don't think this thing will happen. So there's something for us to think about it. And of course, respect, yeah, for the elderly, yeah, for others is equally important. So responsibility, yeah, what is our responsibility? Do ourselves, to our family, to our country, to the world. Uh, these are our values. It should be taught to the student. And also honesty and integrity. Uh, this is something very important. Actually, in one of the survey uh, done, uh, I say if an employer, uh, one of the most important values is not the academy. Actually, they say is how integrity is the workers. So this value is difficult to be taught but I think we, every teacher should try yeah, to inculcate this in the student. And other things like teamwork, kindness, love, yeah, um, responsibility, I think it's all have been mentioned. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lo. Thank you very, very much, Marie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think the three of you have been wonderful guides and mentors to the teachers and the students under your charge. You know, it is so amazing to hear all the good vibes and stories coming from the three of you with so much gems of wisdom among 120 years of experience that you all have accumulated combined. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now uh, we shall open the session to the audience. Uh, we will take questions uh, from the participants now. So, uh, Gregory, are you still there? Could you yes, read up one yes, of the questions? Okay, uh, this question was asked earlier. Uh, what made you all to be persistent despite our rule-restricted education system? I think the catch here is under our rule-restricted education system. What made you become persistent in spite of that? Okay, I shall repeat that question. Uh, it is posted by Joyce, yeah, Joyce Wong. Yes. Uh, yeah, so she asked, what made you all to be perceived? Thank you. It, it's posted, if you go to the meeting chat, you'll find it there. Okay, I'll repeat. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Lowe's 
is uh, hanging at out. Greg, can you take yeah. over? Okay. Greg? Yeah. Sure, sure. The question uh, uh, I will okay. read, right? What, well, okay. what made you all to be persistent despite under our rule restricted education system? So uh, maybe uh, yeah, Debbie, open Debbie, would you like to answer? anyone from the speakers panel. Uh, Mr. Law, I would like to take the questions. All right, I do understand how to just feel. I, when I was in the school <clears throat> as a principal, especially, there are so many rules yeah. and regulations okay. and red tags, you know, to entertain Santa. I said, what is this? But then the whole thing is, yeah, rules and regulations have to be dealt in sometimes, but we have to look at it, yeah, individually. We have to think. Is that beneficial to us? It is not, then we have to think of a way how to overcome it. So for example, yeah, for example, when, you know, I think just uh, when we do the PBS, yeah, PBS at the time, I think, uh, you know, you know, those rules, I during in uh, online, you know, enter the mask and so on. I think every teachers were complaining, even I myself, yeah, I try, you know, I was not teaching that form, but then my teachers were complaining to me. So I say, I try to look at it. I also try to be acting as a teacher and go in. True enough, this type of regulation and so on is really, yeah, headed and also heartbroken. Yeah, I should say that. So what we, I think is, it is not possible, it is not possible for us to change. Overnight, we should suggest, yeah, suggest to the ministry. So I did suggest why not do offline. I even told the ministry officer, yeah, if you can't trust the teachers, you should trust the principal. If you don't trust the principal, then you should try yourself. And yeah, there is, it happened that time, there was, hello, there was, uh, you know, a roadshow. So I told the, uh, the examination session, and I was so grateful that after that, they start to do it offline. So yes, red test and so on. But I think we should have tried to have an open discussion. It's not that easy, but if we do it genuinely and we are passionate enough, I think God will guide us and we will change the system. We need patience, but at the same time, we should be creative to deal all these problems. Yeah, sometimes I would say, oh, this thing, I don't, I do. I don't, but don't go against the, uh, what should we call the rules or the circular. But you can do it in different way. You don't have to follow it exactly, but do it in the different way. So as long as you can get the thing done, that is the most important, right? Then I hang over to you, Mr. Lo. Uh, okay, thank you, Marie. That was a answer. And uh, uh, Penny, Penny. What is your view on that question? Uh, I'm not too sure what you mean by rule restricted education system because uh, well, I, I, I left the school to go to college, so I do not know all this PBS uh, thing. Mm. Uh, I thought we were given quite a lot of leeway to run the school according to what we feel best. Uh, for example, I remember uh, the, the, the rule from the Ministry of Education I mean, it's such a joke now, I, I think back now, was that you all wear white shoes. But I, I was in the kampong school, you know, and the students come to school, mm. uh, muddy shoes and, and uh, all cake, you know, and the white shoes become really brown shoes and uh, there's nothing. So instead of asking them to, yeah, they wash their school. It's not that they didn't wash their shoes, they did, but uh, we decided we have black shoes. I mean, it's a joke now in this country, but we decided to have black shoes and we solved the problem of uh, white shoes becoming black shoes. You know, I mean, we were free to do it, you know. So, um, but if you talk about discipline where the Ministry of Education says that uh, uh, to discipline students, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know. We take that as a guide, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, we still discipline the student, but in a way that there was, I don't feel the students were resentful because, you know, sometimes we hear mm -hmm. yeah. cases uh, the teachers' uh, uh, cars were scratched and, and, and stuff like that, you know. 
but we didn't have this sort of problem because the, the the discipline was carried out honestly by my discipline teacher and we have excellent counselors. Uh, my counseling teacher was excellent and uh, and we were able to 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 exercise discipline in a way the student understood that it was it was not malicious. You see, so uh, I'm not too sure about rural restricted education system. I mean, there's a lot of changes in 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 approach and 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 things like that. But uh, can anyone uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, Debbie. I I'm in the same position as uh, Penny. I really don't understand what they mean by rule restricted education. Uh, mm -hmm. Just during my time. Maybe the rules were we have to lock in for attendance of every class and uh, online wasn't that efficient and the department would call the school. How come you haven't locked in your morning session when it's afternoon and things like that? Um, I think when it's the truth, if it's the internet access, we have to just tell them it is that, that is the reason we cannot lock in. Uh, and if it's, sometimes you have to be creative, but... Um, Rules are not so much the, the thing. Okay, when Penny talked about uh, discipline, I remember the story of a boy who beat up the Ustas who was the discipline teacher. Okay, he mm. beat him up in public and uh, I was given the boy to deal with and I talked to him privately and finally the boy understood what he did was wrong. And he apologized, but I said, no, you, you cannot apologize to me. You beat up Ustas in public. You have mm -hmm. to apologize to him. And you have to apologize to him also in public because you beat him up in public. Mm -hmm. The boy was actually quite scared, but I said, I can walk you there. We, I don't know where Ustas is now, but we will walk and we, we can look at the timetable and we, mm -hmm. we found Ustas. At the door, he's supposed to go in to say sorry to Ustas. And he, you know, hesitated a bit. But I could see his heart was repentant. He ran mm -hmm. inside and said sorry to Ustad. Ustad hugged him in front of the whole class. There was reconciliation. So mm -hmm. I think that a lot of discipline rules, but that connection between the student and the teacher and them understanding, you know, we didn't mm -hmm. beat you for fun. The, mm -hmm. you know, and the whole class, actually the whole class cheered, you know, when they hugged each other. I, I felt it was a very meaningful moment to me uh, to sit down to talk to talk sense to children uh, who, who cannot understand the rules. And same thing for teachers. Uh. That's all. Wow, that was happy. <laughs> I think you still have your heart after all these years. And uh, yeah, even as listeners have seen how the situation was like. And um, so there you are, Joyce. Uh, rule regulations are actually meant to protect us as teachers. Uh, we can't simply do anything we can see. Uh, remember, some teachers, they chaff and not happy with the regulation. So I apply for permission if you need to bring your students out camping, but the rules are there to protect you as a teacher. If anything bad were to happen some way, the first question the investigator will ask is, uh, did you follow, did you comply with the SOP? If you say yes, then the legal will be there to back you up. But if you say no, then you are on your own. So that is, that is the reason why we always emphasize uh, with the board. So I think we are almost there at the end of our full sharing session. In fact, but I think we probably have run out of time. But I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of Help University and Help Academy to say a big thank you to our three panelists. Yeah, Penny. Marie and Debbie, you are definitely amazing educators. And once a teacher, always a teacher. And uh, the heart is there. So let's summarize up uh, one or two things regarding the session today. Uh, so participants and audience out there, 
uh, what have we learned or what have we can we take away from this session with our three panelists? First of all, I would like to say that there are very important values imparted by the teachers of the past. The sense, commitment, sense of purpose, dedication, love for children and making a difference. The second message that we can gather here is that uh, teaching as a career involves a willingness to learn, to be able to change, care for our students and learners, and values driven. So it is not just a job, it is a calling. As to say that a teacher is a teacher. So all the teachers there, happy teachers day, and uh, hope to see you again in another occasion. So before we uh, leave this room, um, Greg would have something to say to our participant. Greg, what do you Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lowe and our panelists, uh, Debbie, Marie and Penny. Yeah, one thing that we learned from this session is that uh, to be a teacher, you must have a very big heart. Okay, and I'm sure AI cannot do that. <laughs> so, so thank you so much. And uh, before before we leave, uh, two things. Oh, number one is we are opening up our counseling rooms uh, at the moment. You can see it in your meeting chat uh, messages here. Uh, my colleague is uh, posting them. Uh, one is a general counseling where if you if any of the teachers or the parents or even the students are in our in our room who like to know more of our programs they can uh, go into this uh, link and um, we have our counselors there to help you out we have a room for our education and our psychology one room for health academy which consists of the a levels the uh, british education which is the the, uh, the derby university of derby programs Okay, and uh, we also have got um, another uh, room uh, for uh, teaching and learning, right? Uh, that one is combined with the psychology um, counseling room. So uh, please feel free to drop into these rooms by clicking the link and uh, we have our counselors there to assist you. Um, secondly, before you leave, uh, don't forget to click on the, um, the QR code uh, because it will be interesting for us, uh, uh, for you to share with us your views about this session so that we can improve ourselves. And if you need more information, we know how to reach you so that we can impart the messages that were shared by our three great uh, panelists. Apparently, they are all ladies. Huh? And you see, women have got a very big heart. So once again, thank you very much, uh, Debbie, uh, Penny, and Marie, and especially to Mr. Lu for bringing this uh, three ladies together and for moderating this session. So with this, 